Who is this? Fulfilling ancient prophecy, arriving as a king, but riding on a donkey, about to turn Jerusalem upside down. Who is this? Hero of the people, friend of sinners, mentor of fishermen, and dignifier of women, welcoming children, tax collectors, and the poor, healing blind eyes and broken lives. Who is this? Commanding the wind and waves, before whom demons tremble and sickness is obliterated. A radical rabbi sparking controversy in every conversation. Rumors of his teaching spreading from town to town. This is he. Who rulers tried to assassinate, haters tried to complicate, leaders tried to dominate, but no one could eradicate. This is he who makes all things new, sets captives free, brings peace and truth, teaches blessed are the poor. And our response? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the son of David. Palms raised, branches wave, shouts of praise. Save us, Jesus. Hosanna, Hosanna. Welcome this morning. Great to have all of you join us here this morning. It is Palm Sunday, the Sunday before Good Friday and Easter Sunday. And are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Yes. It's great to be here with you and share this time. And Sunday is a great time. It's the first day of the week, but more so it's the day that we come to worship the Lord. So I want you to invite you to stand with us this morning. And let's lift up our voices and declare, Blessed is the name of the Lord. Come on, lift up your voice and declare, Our God is high and lifted up. Our God is glorious, and we've come to declare Jesus. King of kings and Lord of lords, King of majesty, King of all the earth. He rules and reigns victoriously. He made his triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. As he made his triumphant entrance, the people shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So I want you to take 60 seconds, lift up your hands and just declare, Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Our God is great, our God is mighty. Yes, He is glorious. And let's declare together, Hosanna. Hosanna in the high. Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. Let's declare, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, when you come everything must change. Hosanna, now that you're here, 
this place will never be the same. said your king will come so we rest our hope on that your word till then hosanna hosanna in the highest when you come everything must change we cry hosanna hosanna now that you're here this place will never
sing Hosanna one more time. Declare Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. When you come, everything must change. Hosanna. Now that you're here, this place will never be the same. Sing it again. Hosanna, Hosanna. 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 Everything must change, everything we must change. Cry, Hosanna, now that, that you're, you're here, here, this place will never be the same. Just one more time, declare Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. When you come, everything must change. Now that you're here, this place will never be the same. Oh, we thank you, God. Everything has changed. You've given us new life. Because of Jesus, we have salvation. Oh, thank you, Lord. Come on, look at someone this morning and just tell them that because of Jesus... Everything about you has changed. <laughs> Everything about me has changed. Come on, he's taken the old and he's made it brand new. And this morning we can give him praise because he's still doing something new. Oh, that's why we give him praise. You are the Lord God Almighty. And Lord, we give you praise today, Lord. Come on, bless the Lord one more time and give him praise all over this house. Yeah. You are the Lord, God of You're perfect in everything you do. The angels declare you are holy. Yes, you are holy. And no one else compares to you. Should we stand in the presence of the Lord?
like to bless the Lord. <laughs> Give me praises. Come on, wave your hands like palm branches this morning and shout, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, be Shadows of my yesterday They clouded up my faith to pray But you blew them all away Come on band, help me sing this morning For a voice has tried Stop to pull me down Bury me Bury me into the ground But you made But you made a the Lord in this place. Yeah. One, two, three. Let's go. Let your music play. It's time to celebrate. Cause it's a brand new day. One more time. Let's go. We are so alive. And God is on. Say, ooh, 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 ooh. Say, let's go. Come on. Say, with your blood, say, your blood you sacrifice give it all, give it all. you pay the price you have opened, you have opened paradise. paradise we thank you Jesus say it now and now I hear you calling me the voice of the voice of a raging sea oh this is this is your destiny yeah. say let's go So alive, and God is on our side. Ooh, 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 yeah. Say, let's go. Your glory rises like the sun, it's radiating light to everyone. Now, death is over, and we're alive. And now I'm running in my destiny. Oh, for your glory, Lord, I will go. Come on, say your glory rises. Your glory rises. Say, like the sun, it's radiating light to everyone. Now death is over, and I'm alive. I'm taking a hold. Let's go. Let the music play. It's time to celebrate. Cause it's a brand new day. Say, let's go. We are so alive. And God is on our side. Ooh, 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 yeah. Let's go. Whoa. One more time, say, let's go. I wanna, can we just sing that one more time that your glory rises like the sun. We have the sun, the light of the world. His name is Jesus. And where the light of Jesus shines, every form of darkness is expelled. And so this morning, as you sing that one more time, you can declare and say, thank you, Jesus. You've taken care of every form of darkness in my life. <laughs> Come on, let's declare it this morning. Sickness is gone because of Jesus. <laughs> Shame has been 
broken over our lives because of Jesus, because of his glory, because of his light. Let's declare it. Your glory rises like the sun, radiating life to everyone. Now death is over and I'm alive. just to welcome them this morning to Good Hope Christian Center. <laughs> wow, praise the Lord. Amen. Are you, are you excited to be here this morning? Well, it's Sunday morning and it's the first day of the week and we are the children of God come to give God praise and this as I said earlier and you missed it this morning good morning and my name is Grant and I'm one of the pastors here at Good of Christian Center and it's wonderful to have you here with us this morning and the presence of the Lord when Jesus entered into Jerusalem on a donkey with his disciples people recognize the fact that he was king and this morning as you come into this place your circumstances has to recognize who is king because Jesus has been given a name that's above every other name and at his name every knee will have to bow that means as you walked into this room today your life has to change because it encountered the presence of Jesus come on when Jesus walks in we can only but bow down and declare you are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Let's declare that this morning. Say, God, you are King of Kings. Jesus, you are Lord of Lords. And you are the Prince of Peace. My wonderful Counselor. You are my mighty God. You are the everlasting Father. That's who he is this morning. Now, as you're seated there this morning... Put your hands together and welcome the King of glory into this room, into your circumstance. To every mountain we can declare it has to bow because Jesus is here today. <laughs> well, hallelujah. And this morning, we thank God that you are here. And how many of you are glad that you can be here today in the house of the Lord? I just have a few announcements to make this morning. We're in for an exciting time in the presence of the Lord. But this morning, we want to remind you that this coming Wednesday, someone say this Wednesday. Now, I know that we have had many of you register, but this is your opportunity to still make it on Wednesday. 
if you're able to put in some time and get off work between 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock, um, it means that you'll be fasting during that time. But we will take care of you because we'll give you something to eat. Right? So you take your lunch break and come to town and join us at the Cape of the Castle of Good Hope. We'll be getting together there at 12 o'clock and we're going to be marching and lifting up the name of Jesus and lifting high the banner of Jesus, singing Cape Town for Jesus and Jesus for Cape Town. Come on, this has been, we're, this is going to be our ninth year of going into the city and spreading the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, that he came from heaven to earth. From earth he went to the cross. From the cross, he went to the grave. And from the grave, he ascended on high. And he makes intercession for you and I. And so we're going to share the story of Jesus in the middle of our city. And you can be a part of that. Let me see. Now we have over 400 people that are joining us on, on Wednesday. I think that's amazing. Come on, look at someone and tell them, well done. Yes. Over 400 people are getting together and you can still be a part of that. All that you need to do is, someone shout, show up. <laughs> That's right. All you got to do is show up and lift up. We'll give you palm branch. We'll give you a, 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 lift, a, a, a banner that says hope, for, hope and healing in Jesus. And so everything will be taken care of. All you need to do is show up. Now, if you're going to be showing up on, on Wednesday, wear one of our GHCC branded t-shirts. You can wear any of them, but in the bookshop, you can, you, can, you can collect, not collect. That means it's free, but it's not. But you can purchase one of our Jesus Generation t-shirts in the bookshop. This is our theme for the year. Our theme is Jesus. And so come and join us 12 o'clock at, at the Castle of Good Hope on Wednesday. And then I've got a special announcement to make. And on behalf of Pastor Wendy and the pastors, we got together this week and discussed what we're going to do for this Easter and to make Easter special for you and your family. This coming Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I know that there's been a cost on our Easter ticket. Someone say the promise. And what we are doing is all of our tickets, if you're not part of the VIP and if you've purchased the ticket, listen second. But if you've not yet purchased the ticket, <laughs> all of our general seating in the building is going to be absolutely free. <laughs> so this morning we are handing our tickets in the front and you can take a ticket for absolute, none of you are excited? I think <laughs> if I was saying we're handing out free cook sisters and free samosas, maybe you'd be standing up right now and going to the back. But this morning, you can take, uh, take advantage of this Sunday morning service. Before the service, or when the service ends, we've got tables in the front. You can collect as many tickets as you like. Now, there, there is a limit to the tickets that we can give out this morning. And if you purchase a VIP or any ticket, then we'll bump you up to VIP, okay? So you can get a special seat, special treatment as you come. I said last week, we are waiting to start the feet, washing the feet ministry for the VIP experience. Amen, Chris? You in? Okay. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you, everybody, Chris said? I mean. All right. So VIP, come speak to Chris. He'll wash your feet. <laughs> All right, but I'm sure your wife is going to be very happy with you, Chris. But so this coming Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, all of the tickets are available in the foyer, and all general seating is absolutely free. Come on, let's thank the Lord that we can share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in this way. So even if you don't take tickets for yourself, that's also right, but, you know, the building can only seat a certain amount of people, and therefore the tickets, we have a certain quota of tickets to hand out. Yesterday we had the Easter Jam, and we handed out over 300 tickets already. So please, before you leave today, 
It might be the last time we see you before Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So please go back there and take some tickets with you today. Right? VIP tickets is still for sale. So if you want to come in at a certain time, at a special time, and get a special seat here in the front or on the top balcony, then you can still purchase those. Are you excited to, to just come and be a part of what we do here at Good Hope Christian Center? Amen. Well, this morning, I would like to welcome a dear friend of ours, Brian Riley. Come on, put your hands together for him. He's coming to share with us, and he's got a wonderful testimony to share with us this morning. Good morning, Brian. Hi, Pastor. All right, is your mic on? It's not on. Uh, it is on, but can we just make it louder for Brian? <laughs> All right. Thanks, Brian. Go ahead and share this morning. It actually belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. It belongs to God. He's the one that gives it to us. And he's the one that allows us to use it and distribute it. And the thing is also, it's not as we would, but as he would want us to do it. So always look and see when you're using your finances, how does it glorify God? Not just, this is for me. I've got so, many, so much money, you know, and I can get all these things for me. But the main thing is, how does it glorify God? How does it enlarge the kingdom? So I'll just go through two scriptures quickly. One that you guys will probably know very well. Malachi 3 and verse 9 and 10. You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me even with this whole nation. Bring all the tithes, the whole tenth of your income, into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And prove me now, by it says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And the thing is with this also, God basically tells you to prove him. So you can, when you bring your tithe to the Lord, you can ask the Lord, Lord, prove the blessings that you're promising me. Prove how great you are, Lord, and God will do it, because he's not the man that he should lie. Then another scripture I just want to go to quickly is 2 Corinthians, verse chapter 9, and from verse 7. Let each one of you give as he has made up in his own mind and purpose in his own hearts, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion, for God loves that is, he takes pleasure in prizes above other things and is unwilling to abandon or to do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do giver whose heart is in his given. And God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatsoever the need be self-sufficient Possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. Uh, basically also, if God is telling you, when you come to him, don't just give it to him because you have to or because you've been taught to give it to him, but do it cheerfully. Because I, I think back on, um, as a family, when our kids were growing up, uh, what we used to do, when I, I got the paycheck each month at the same date, we used to get together, my wife and I, with the kids, and we say, listen, fellas, it's time to give to the Lord. It's time to tithe. And we would have a tithing party, and we'd, pra and we'd sing praises to the Lord, and we thank him for giving us the opportunity to bring the money and give it back to him, because we knew he's a God that we can honor in each and every time. And what we found out also is, God is true to his word, and he always does what he said he would do. Yeah, I'm looking back also at 
the first house that we bought, when I bought it, we went to look at the place and I, I basically had five quid in my pocket and that was it. But I still made the offer on the gun. And we went to the bank, the bank manager spoke with us and he said, you know what? You guys are eligible for a 100% bond because you're first time homeowner. So we said, oh, that's fantastic, praise the Lord. Then, but you have to pay the admin fee. And he told us, okay, and that's 2,700 quid. So we said, you know, and it was on a Friday, he said, ah, no problem. We'll have it for you on Monday. In the meantime, in the natural, I had no money. So we prayed about it and we thanked the Lord that he would provide because that's what he says in his word. And what we did the Sunday when we went to church, 2,700, and I took the money that I had and I tied on the 2,700 in advance. And when we came out of church, we walked to the car, then a lady stopped her and she said, look, the Lord just said I must give you this envelope. So we said, thank you. We got into the car, we opened the envelope and it was the exact amount that we needed for the admin fee. Showing you how good God is. And when my daughter went to Varsity, the second year she needed a MacBook Pro and a digital camera with all the fittings and everything. So we prayed. We also we said, Look, Lord, you said ask and you receive. So that's what we're doing. We're asking and we receive in Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> So we would like to hear Brian this morning. Amen. <laughs> How many of you just love this testimony? Yes, of what the Lord can do and what God is busy doing. And Brian, if He did it for you, He can Amen. do it for every person that's here. Amen. I, I know that you, Pastor Wendy loves your cowboy boots, <laughs> and she keeps asking Brian, Brian, why are, are, are you into horses? Well, I've never been horses when I was a real lad. Was it when you were a real lad? Okay, all right. <laughs> and now, and now, and now you are much older, and you, and you what? You are still riding horses? Oh um, yeah, but nowadays it's sort of like horses under the bonnet. Horses under horsepower. <laughs> How many horsepower do you drive? <laughs> uh, at at the moment, I only have a, a small fifteen hundred uh. cc. But, but it's important to get from A to B, right? Amen. That's, that's the plan. That's, that's where we all need to be. <laughs> but Brian, what a wonderful testimony. Just if you can help us, we'd love, love to hear the testimony. And so your daughter bought a digital camera. She was trusting Lord for the digital yeah, camera. Yeah, that was in the second year of asking. She yes. needed that. Yes. But the price of the MacBook was 25 grand. Oh, yes, I know. And the price of the camera was eight and a half grand. Okay. And then we went. And they said, look, somebody ordered the camera, but they hadn't picked it up. Yes. So we can get it for four and a half. Oh, wow. So we said, oh, that's cool. And then he asked, is your daughter a student? Yes. So I said, yes. He said, oh, we'll give her extra 10% off. Wow. <laughs> this is a brand new digital camera. Yes. Oh, my. With, with the, um, all the fittings, the zoom lenses and everything. Amen. And then the MacBook again, one of the girls, ex-students. Yes. She needed cash, so, she, so we got it by her for 12 grand. Oh, praise the Lord. How does God work that out? Amen. He's working all things for your good. Romans 8. And so, you know, Brian, I, I, I do sense that this morning, that for everybody that's here this morning, that because of your faithfulness to the Lord, because of you and your wife's faithfulness, the blessing is transferred to your children. And your, and your daughter experienced the blessing of the Lord as a result of your obedience. And of course, I'm, I'm sure that, that she's also learned that obedience of giving and sacrificial giving to the Lord. Amen. Amen. So God's working all things for your good. Amen. Amen. And so this morning, Brian, let's go ahead and let's pray together. And as you get ready to give, take that seed in your hand this morning. And as you take that seed and get ready to give this morning, you can connect not with someone's experiences only, but you can connect with the voice of faith. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence that can call those things that are not as though they are. It can make bonds appear, amen, where bank managers said it's not possible. It can make... Oh, computers and uh, the evidence of 
digital cameras, the favor of God in your life, I'm not just talking about things, but I'm talking about the favor, the unmerited favor of God. There's a great saying, Brian, that says that one, one day of favor cannot be measured against a thousand days of labor. All you need is one moment of favor with God and all things are possible. So let's go ahead and take that seat this morning. Take it in your hand this morning. And I'm going to get Brian to pray this morning. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to come and to give to you again, Lord. Thank and you, Father, I thank you that as, as people come, as they put their seed in the, in the, in the offering, yes. I thank you, Father, that you multiply that seed, not yes. 60, not 40, not 60, but 100-fold, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And I thank you, Father, that they receive abundantly over what they expect and not just for them, but so that they can be a blessing to others also. Amen. And we thank you and we praise you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brian. Let's go ahead and let's give to the Lord this morning.
that your body was broken so ours can be healed. Just come to thank you this morning. Just come to thank you. Yes. Just bound to bow before you in honor of your great name, honor of your great endeavors, and all oh, yes. that you have done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Oh, yes. Can I hear myself on one of these monitors? If you don't mind, it's back there. Someone's on the sound. So I can hear the music. I just like to hear my voice. God well, bless you. May be seated this morning. My name is Llewellyn Roberts. Pastor with Pastor Wendy and Pastor Grant and all the other pastors or plasters. Depending what you need, we have a plaster, plaster. for your disaster. <laughs> but it's so wonderful to be in the presence of the Lord, and especially on this Palm Sunday, that we can come. You know, what does Palm Sunday mean to us? So many times every year we go through Palm Sunday and we get palm leaves. The last year we had a lot of palm leaves and palm leaves were everywhere. And we have some there today, but sometimes we have palm leaves everywhere. And I've been some places that palm leaves at the door, you had to come through the leaves of, of the palm. And it all indicates the beginning of Jesus' agony. This week is the beginning of what Jesus went through for you and for me. This is the beginning. This Sunday is a celebration of him coming into the city of Jerusalem and being honored as king. This is the beginning of this week. You know, kings in the old days used to, a king would rode a horse if he rode into the city for war. But he would come on a donkey if he was coming for peace. And so Jesus didn't ride a horse of war into the city to declare war. He came and he brought peace. And that's what the donkey indicates is peace. Jesus came to bring peace. And Jesus came to give us victory from sin. Victory from darkness. And that's what this palm leaves means. They are a sign of peace and they are a sign of victory and when Jesus entered the city it was in fulfillment of prophecy it was in fulfillment of prophecy of Jesus the people shouted behold your king is come in, in, in the, uh, Zechariah said behold your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey on a colt Hosanna to the son of David Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And these scriptures remind us that only Jesus Christ is king of glory. Oh, yes. Only Jesus is king. We cannot have any other king in our life. A king is someone that we have given control of our lives to. A king is somebody that is a king of a kingdom. And we are part of his kingdom. He is the head. We are the body. He is the king. We are his people. Amen. But he's not like an earthly king who demands from his subjects. He is a king who gives. He is a king who takes care of. He is unlike any other human king because human kings will take. When God spoke to Samuel, because God had changed Samuel, said to Samuel, Saul, is, is, is the, the people want a king. People came to Samuel and said, oh, we want a king. And Samuel was upset and he said, prayed and he said to God that people want a king. And he said, why are you worried? They haven't rejected you, they've rejected me. See, when we make man our king, we reject God. When we put someone else above God, we reject God. God said to Samuel, they haven't rejected me as king. You as king, they've rejected me as king so that they can have a man who is king. But let me tell you, tell them something from me. He said, when you make a man your king, he will take from you. He will take your daughters and make them perfumers in his land. He will take your sons to make them captains in his army. He will take your fields. He will take whatever you have and he will give it to his friends. He will take, he will take, he will take. But when we make Jesus our king, he never takes. 
he only gives. He is the king that gives. He gave his life for us. And he gave his breath for us. He gave his body for us so that we can live. And this is the psalm that we need to remember him. You know, we have to, I had to get myself, my men, myself mentally right because a lot of things you need to forget. But there's a lot of things you need to remember. And one of the things is Jesus. You know, how much time do we spend investigating Jesus yeah. in the word of God? How much time of our day? And each one of us has, has a different answer to that question. Each one of us has to stand before God and give an account. Because either you know him or you don't know him. Understand something, we can't get into the kingdom of heaven without knowing the king. You've got to know the king. And the only way you get to know the king is through fellowship. The only way you get to know the king is through his word. And this is a time where we are reminded of the king of glory. The king of glory came in to the city of Jerusalem. And they cried out, Hosanna to the king. Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna. Are we like that every day? Do we call him to remembrance every morning? Say glory to the king. Sometimes we get caught up with so many frivolous things. So many things that are really mean nothing. Because we have to come from this point of view. Peter said something. We are aliens here. This is not our home. This is not our home. Because if it was your home, you would stay here when you died. This is not your home. When, you leave, when you, your body lies down in the earth and all of our bodies will at some time or the other unless the Lord Jesus comes back. But this is not your home. Are you preparing for home? Do you know the King of glory? I'm not talking about know about him. Do you know him intimately? Because Jesus said that's what eternal life is, is knowing God, the one and only God. That is what eternal life is and knowing the Lord Jesus Christ, John 17 verse 3. And so it's up to each one of us to get to know him. And today is a reminder for us to get to know him as king of glory. It's another opportunity for us as a reminder that he is king. Because the, palm, the palms represented peace. They represented goodness. They represented victory. And remind us that he would fulfill soon. He would conquer death for us. He would conquer death. See, we think death is when this body lies down into the earth. No, the Bible, when the Bible talks about death, there's two deaths, the death of this body, but your spirit and your soul live forever. The person looking out of your eyes at me and look around this world, that's the real you. That's your spirit, that's your soul. This body just carries you around. And we've got to start thinking like that. I'm a spiritual being. I'm not just a human being. A lot of times people say, I'm a human being. No, you are a human. Are you a spiritual being having a human experience? I'll say it over here. Yeah. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. Because this is not your home. Paul said, don't gather up treasures for yourself here. You're going to have to let them go and someone else is going to take them. When you gather up treasures for yourself here, Moth and rust can come in and take it away. But when you build up your treasures in heaven, no thief can break in and steal. Nothing can rust. Nothing can be eaten up by moth or rust. Nothing. And so he says, build up for yourself treasures in heaven because wherever your heart is, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. So if, you're, if your eyes are focused on the treasures of this earth, that's where your focus will be. On the things, what can I get here? What motivates me here? Why do I paint my tiles if I don't get something out of it? 
One of the things that we do when we bring our tithes to the Lord, we don't give our tithes, we bring. And it's up to Him whether He accepts it or not. It's not whether you bring it or not. We have to get past the thinking that it's me bringing something to God. No, giving something to God. No, you are bringing Him the offering. And if He says the offering has to be a certain way, if it's not within His dimensions, He doesn't take it and He's not obligated to keep His promise to you. When you bring your tithe to Him, it has to be with a heart that is full of honor towards Him and reverence. With a heart full of honor, I bring my tithe. With a heart full of honor, I bring my free will offering to Him. Because I honor Him, because I reverence Him. And in honoring and reverence Him, that means I obey Him. This Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. And so Jesus has come into this world. He came into the city. The city cried out Hosanna to the king. But when Jesus died, he also defeated Satan. The Bible in Colossians 2 verse 15 says, God disarmed principalities and powers that were ranged against us. There were principalities and powers that were ranged against us and made a bold display and public example of them by triumphing over them in Him and in the cross. So through Jesus Christ and the cross, the devil has been defeated. Principalities and powers have been defeated. And that's why we rejoice on this day. Because He brought peace to this earth. But He triumphant, was triumphant over the works of darkness and the deeds of darkness so that he could beat them he beat them for us so that we can be saved you see on the heels of palm sunday we both begin this holy week and this week on this day we are reminded of the significance of this time this is just before he's betrayed by judas this is just before he is rejected this is just before that in God's eyes, death is this, is to be separated from God forever. True death, that the Bible talks about biblical death, is separation from God. That's what the Bible says the second death is. And on the cross, he was separated from his father. That's why he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was separated from the father for the very first time. For you and for me. He went through that death so that you never have to experience it. We are reminded of its significance and value today of what he has done. We are reminded that Palm Sunday began his journey towards the cross. This is the beginning of his journey. You know, we live busy lives. We have busy lives. We have busy thoughts. We may unintentionally miss out on one of the greatest truths. We are so busy and so our thought life is so caught up with things. I'm telling you, get away from the news. Get away from those things that are negative. Well, I'm, I have this interest in the world's troubles. Don't focus on the troubles. Focus on the truth. We may unintentionally miss out on the greatest of truths and his words reveal his great truths. In every part of the story, we see truth. These truths draw us closer to Jesus. These truths remind us that he alone, he alone is king. You know, I, I, there's many times when the Lord speaks to your heart See, you can't preach something and live another way. You can't say something and do something different. That means you're a hypocrite. If you talk one way and you walk another, you're a hypocrite. You go walk and your talk has to be the same thing. And as Palm Sunday reminds us that Jesus alone is king, is he king in each of you, every area of your life? 
So he might be king in one area of your life, but is he king in every area of your life? That means to be king or to be first. Above all else, before all else. Above all else, before all else. Is he first in every area? And that's what we have to make him king. Because unless he's king in those areas, we will live a life of drought and a life of doing without. Because he is only king of what is given to him. And so every part of us needs to be given to him. And simple thing, the Lord said to me one day, in your time, Luella, am I first? In your time. I'm just asking you one, one thing, just time. The time on this earth, is, am I first in your time? I said, yes, you are. You know, I pray every morning. You know I speak to you every morning. But he said, am I first? He said, who did you speak to first this morning? I said, Sylvia. My wife, then he said, then she's first. I want that place. I want to be first. And he can't, he never forces him to be first. He never forces himself, you must want to put him first. To be forced to put first is to be a ruthless king. He doesn't want to be, he's a king of love. He wants you to put him first. But don't say he's first if he's not, because he will correct you. Rather say, my wife is first than you're second. <laughs> it got quiet in the judge today. Put him first. And so from that moment on, <clears throat> I know my wife is not an early person, so I got up earlier than her. So I go and pray and spend time with the Lord, then spend time with her, then spend time with my family. First in time, let me tell you something, the benefits, when you put him first at the beginning of your day, he'll take care of the rest of the day for you. The rest of your day will be blessed. But if he comes second and you put him in that place, maybe unintentionally we've done it. We haven't thought about it. Is he first in your thought life? See, your thoughts are directly connected to your emotions. Is he first? We're reminded today that he is king and we must put him first. See, God's word tells us the people cut down palm branches. The word tells us people waved him in the air. The Bible tells us the people laid them out on the ground before Jesus as he rode to the city. The people did it. The people cut down the palms. They cut down the palms. They waved them. They laid them in front of him. They took clothing and they laid across the donkey because they recognized him as king. Because they recognized him as king. They recognized he was the fulfillment of Zechariah 9 verse 9. That's why they did it. There's an action to recognition. There's an action to recognition. I, the other day, just talking about tithing. You know, tithing, I, I did a demonstration one Sunday night here of of all your goods, how your tithe protects your goods. And I was, take, I was going with Pastor Wendy. She asked me if I drive her down to go and pick up Luigi's food. And it's quite a, it's in Malmesbury, Malmesbury. And it's a long way away. And so I got in the car and I heard something drop, but I thought my phone had dropped into the car. And we drove along and Wendy said, are you sure the, the, the phone's in the car? I said, well, ring it. And it, it, it rang in her car, which, uh, anyway, I rang the phone, and next thing, I get a call from my phone. And a man had picked up my phone. He was on his way to his job. He was working as a painter at one of the buildings. And he said, I've got your phone for you. Come and pick it up. And where it fell, it was 
a place where there were a lot of people just sitting around waiting for a phone to fall into their lap. I won't mention what type of people those are, but you know the ones that just wait and they never return. Called me up and he said, got your phone for you, can you come and fetch it? He said, we want to give you a reward. He said, no, I don't want a reward. I don't want a reward. The lady that works for Pastor Wendy Gift, she went down the road, which we were halfway to Malmesbury already. We were nearly at Malmesbury. She went down and she picked up the phone and she came back. She said, I've got the phone. See, God protects your things if you put them first. You're wondering why you're paying your tithes and you're paying them second. And then you wonder why things, second things are happening in your life. Is God really first in your tithing? The first money you get, do you take it and give it to him? The actual first money. Have you got a stop order on your banking account that says, take the first 10%? Do I come the first Sunday? Bring my tithe. See, it's a challenge for us to put someone first other than ourselves. Because we put ourselves first for so long that it's very difficult to put God first. We've got into the habit, but we need to change that habit if we want the blessings of God. If we really want the blessings of God, because the Bible says, Jesus said, put him first, his kingdom first, his way of doing and being right first, then all these things will be added unto you. There's a condition. There's a condition to every blessing. And so today is a reminder that people, they cut down the branches and they laid them down in front of him because they recognized him. He was king of the prophecy of Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you righteous and having salvation as he humble not wealthy humble in attitude and mounted on a donkey colt foal on a donkey a colt foal of a donkey see the people cried out in psalm 118 the crowd of the people was save us we pray O lord Oh Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. And then they said in verse 18, You are my God and I will give you thanks. You are good and your loving kindness endures forever. And the Bible says the people welcomed him. The people cut palm branches. The people laid them down in front of him. Jesus came to establish not an earthly kingdom, he came to establish a heavenly kingdom that we as the children of God belong to. And so we welcome Jesus into our hearts. That's the first step. The second step is to make him king in every area. You know, some of us are like houses. You know, the, the attic is still belongs to us. We want to keep a room for ourselves. And we wonder why. But the Bible says he wants, you must love him with all, with all your heart, all your mind, all, everything. So there's nothing left for yourself. All his. Let me tell you something, when you begin to start thinking like this, as God began to speak to me about my time, the more time I gave him, I gave him my time, and I gave it out of my own free will, not because I had to give it. A lot of times people think, well, I have to do it. And so you come into the presence of God at four o'clock. Well, Pastor Llewellyn said, he comes in at four. So I'm here. I haven't even had my coffee yet. Yeah, I'm praying. You think God wants to talk to you with that attitude? You think if you're upset, you don't think he, he thinks, oh, 
Oh, here they come again. Oh, no. They're all upset about something. Jesus, through his precious blood in his body, has opened a way that we can come into his presence. Jesus opened that way for us, just as he made his way into the city of Jerusalem. Just as he made his way in there, he wants to make his way into our lives. If you've never given him your life, he wants to come into your life, but he stands at the door and knocks. And you have to open the door and let him in. But understand something, we're all here. You might not might, might be Christians, you might have been a Christian for 500 years. You might say, well, pastor, I know everything that you're talking about. I know. It's not about knowing, it's about doing. Is God first? And that's a challenge for every single one of us. Is he first in your marriage? Because if he's first in your marriage, <laughs> you'll never be divorced. If he's first in your business, you will never go out of business. If he is first, that's where he gets consulted on every single thing first. Come to him. In your business, make him CEO, owner, not CEO, owner. You work for him, manager. And do that literally. I got a friend who worked in the oil fields and uh, building um, oil refineries and big, large steel structures. And he made the Lord God his the owner of his company. He wrote it out, put it in his study, and he got three contracts, and he laid them out in front of himself. And he said, Lord, which ones should I take and which ones should I leave? These are contracts he already has. They've already been awarded to him. And he went to the first one, and the, the first was a million rand up front, and then over a period of time, 15 to 20 million. Went to the second one, it was four million, now three million up front, and then over a period of time, I don't exactly know that. Then the third one was nothing up front, but it was like a 10 year contract. And he prayed and he said, Lord, which one? And he put his hand on each one. The Lord said, Take this one on the right with nothing up front. And he said, Okay, Lord, you're the Lord of the company. You're the owner of the company. He took that contract and he went to his opposition and he handed these two other contracts to the people that were in opposition to him. Also built oil refineries, also built exactly the same thing as him. They couldn't believe it. He said, you're giving us these contracts? You're giving us these contracts? He said, yes, I've taken this one. He handed them out to them. The contract that the Lord told him to keep is still going to this day. That's 35 years ago. Those other contracts, in six months, they were dead. There was thievery involved. There were criminality. There was whatever you can think of. Yes, they got the money up front, but they got stolen from at the back end. So when God is first, He will warn you that you don't even get into that place that you have to get out of. Because while we get into the place that we should get out of is because we haven't consulted Him. That's why we got into that place. If we put Him first, but who are you going to marry? If you're married, you got, that's it. You can't change. Amen. See, people aren't so sure here in the church. I can't change? No, you can't. Bible says God hates divorce. You, you're stuck. Make the best of it. Usually, if the one that's complaining, it's your fault. Remember that. I learned something. If the car's got no petrol, it's my fault. If there's no groceries, it's my fault. Everything's my fault. Accept it. Then you won't have problems. It's a joke. <clears throat> Listen to me today. Put God first. It's one of the most difficult things to do. 
I'm not saying, I'm not, it's easy to say it. Let me tell you something, it's the easiest to say Jesus is Lord. It's easy to say, but to live it, to be truthful about it, that it is really Him first. It's going to cost you. It'll cost you to put Him first. It'll cost you to put Him first. But one day when you see Him, He will say, well done. My good and faithful servant, well done. You ministered right on my behalf. I gave you something to do and you did it. You did it the way I asked you to do it. You followed my will in everything you did. Well done. If you never accepted Jesus and you might be here today, I want you just to say this prayer with me from the bottom of your heart. Heavenly Father, thank you for providing the great sacrifice, great sacrifice, your only begotten Son. Your only begotten Son. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being that sacrifice. Thank you for suffering for me. Thank you for suffering. So I don't have to. Thank you for taking my place. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you died personally. I believe that you rose again on the third day for me. And I believe that you lifted me up, you lifted me up when, you arose when you arose and have seated me and seated at the right hand of God with you. At the right hand of God with you. That's my position of authority. I make you Lord and I make you King of my life. You king of my all that I am, all that I am, all that I ever will be, all that I, I give to you. Be, I give to you. Spirit, soul, and body. Yes. Now I'm a citizen of heaven. Yes. Amen. And amen. Just do the practical steps today as we are reminded that Jesus came into the city and the people acknowledged him as king. Take a look at your life. If you're going through problems in your life, I'm telling you now, have a look and see. There's probably an area in your life that you've left open where he's not Lord, he's not first. Because the devil will take a, make a foothold there. Wherever God is not first, the devil will get a foothold. And once he gets a foothold, he'll get a handhold. Oh, yeah. And once he gets a handhold, he'll make a stronghold. So don't give him a foothold, don't give him a handhold, then he will never make a stronghold. Check it out today. Just look at your life. Go and spend some quiet time after you've had lunch, before you go to sleep this afternoon. And just say, Lord, is there an area of my life that I haven't put you first? And he'll show you. He is so wonderful and gentle. He will show you the areas that you maybe you haven't put him first. And you just say, sorry, Lord, I'm sorry I didn't put you first there. And he'll say, it's all right. Let's go on together. Yes. Heavenly Father, as we go thank today, you, we thank you that you go with us. We thank you that your presence goes with us. And so we do not fear what we will face. Because you are with us. And every knee must bow and every tongue confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord. And because you're Lord of our lives, they will bow before us. Sickness will bow before us. Poverty will bow. Any negative thing, demonic, will bow. Lord, I just feel like praying for mothers and fathers here who have children who are away from you. Lord, I pray as in the name of Jesus. Lord, that you would send a harvest to the child, a harvester. Sometimes we can't reach our own children. 
sometimes we can't reach those who are close to us. But Lord Jesus, you said, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send a harvester. If it's me, Lord, send me. If it's someone else, you know who to send. You know the right harvester to send. And we thank you for doing that today. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. Amen. God bless you.